Hi, I'm Marcy Newsom with the Brain and Spinal Cord Injury Center at brainandspinalcord.org. Today I'll be talking about some of the latest developments in traumatic brain injury treatments. Be sure to check the website for all relevant links and a recap of this article. There have been developments lately in the way brain injuries can be treated. First are those treatments used during the acute care phase, and second are the treatments used after the acute care phase. We'll discuss both types starting with those that can be used during the acute phase. The first stage occurs immediately following the injury until the patient is stable. Here, the main goal of treatment is to help prevent secondary injury from loss of blood flow and swelling to the brain. Three treatments used during the acute care stage are first, omega-3 fatty acids, second, artificial blood, and third, progesterone. Following a traumatic brain injury, the brain often has a diminished ability to cope with additional injury, and in many cases, cognitive ability is affected. It is thought that some of this compromised function is caused by reduced metabolic energy, but new developments show that a dietary supplement of omega-3 fatty acids counteracts some of the effects of traumatic brain injury by improving the energy status of cells. Another treatment shown to have excellent results during the acute phase is artificial blood. In order to understand why this works, you must first understand that a continual flow of blood and oxygen ensures that brain cells stay alive. In many cases, immediately following traumatic brain injury, the flow of blood and oxygen is compromised, causing brain cells to die within hours. But an artificial blood called oxycyte carries four times the oxygen level of real red blood cells to brain tissue that has suffered traumatic injury. Human trials are currently underway at the University of Miami School of Medicine. Specialists think these studies will prove that artificial blood interrupts cell death immediately following brain injury and thus prevents more severe disabilities. Preliminary studies are also showing that progesterone, a female hormone used in the contraceptive pill, may also be an effective way to minimize the effects of traumatic brain injury. While its neuroprotective elements aren't completely understood, a group of Chinese researchers have shown that neurologic outcomes of brain-injured patients can be improved with progesterone. Some recent developments in traumatic brain injury treatment are designed to be used after the acute stage. Two of these treatments are cognitive rehabilitation and infrared laser treatment. Cognitive rehabilitation is an individualized treatment plan that focuses on the patient's unique issues and problems. The therapy, which is designed to reduce as much of the effects of the injury as possible, may include a combination of occupational therapy, speech therapy, organizational therapy, and hand-eye coordination. While the brain isn't technically healed during cognitive rehabilitation, it does learn how to compensate for the injury. Infrared laser treatment is done via a handheld device that emits high-intensity infrared energy to the brain when held to the patient's head. The idea behind this therapy is that the infrared energy will supply energy power to cells, which will help them resume function. Researchers in North Carolina are currently studying the effects of infrared laser treatment to more formally determine potential results. This concludes our segment on the latest developments in traumatic brain injury treatment. For more information about these developments in brain injury treatments or to read more about this topic, visit our website at brainandspinalcord.org. And thanks for watching.